Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the Church of the Living God Sunday Live. This is Ella Foster coming to you live from Mesa, Arizona. We are the church in Santan Valley, uh, Arizona. Uh, as you all know, still there's still some effects and ramifications from the pandemic that allowed that uh, forces us rather to continue to be mobile while we do our service. However, I do thank all of you for participating and joining those that join a Bible class and participate in the prayer line. Thank you for supporting us and being with us. And again, hopefully uh, we'll be ready for the radio. I started doing some recording last night. We got some hiccups in there. Uh, so we got to work that out uh, before we go live. But thank you all for joining. A couple, uh, let me do prayer first and I'll make a couple announcements Then I'll get into what I want to talk about today, uh, Lord willing. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for another day. For blessing and keeping and strengthening us and leading us, Father Lord, and allowing us to come before your presence. Pray that your Holy Spirit take over, Father Lord, and we minister to the people, strengthen the people, help the people, to deliver the people, Father Lord. And uh, Father Lord, you bought salvation freely, Father, and we also give it freely, Father Lord. Pray use all the ministers all around, Father Lord, as they don't the pulpit, that uh, they allow you to use them to reach the people, to touch the people. Pray for those that are sick, for those that are recovering, for those that are lost loved ones. We can be praising glory for all things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, once again, thank you all for joining. A uh, couple announcements real quick. Again, I invite you to join our prayer line every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 o'clock Arizona time, 8 o'clock if you're in the Midwest, and 9 o'clock on the East Coast. That prayer line number is 712-432-3900. Once again, 712-432-3900. You want to press pound 245-826. Sister Annette McAfee is the moderator of the line. She'll get you in there and get you in the status position. Come share your testimonies, praise report, prayer requests, and we give a short lesson, and then we close out in prayer. We'll be glad to have you. Uh, Bible class every Wednesday, 6 o'clock Arizona time, 8 o'clock Midwest, 9 o'clock East Coast, and we do that live on the Sunday Live channel. Um, and of course, you see us here today, so we thank you for joining us. Um, and I, again, I thank you all for your support. I hope that these lessons, I pray that these lessons, because I don't believe the Word of God can be void. I pray that they are blessing you, helping to change your life, to strengthen your walk with Christ, uh, giving you information that you need to continue on your walk. Uh, and for my Bible class, I always open it up. If you have questions you want to pose, you can definitely text those to me at 480-408-0128, or you can send them over to the Facebook channel, and other clients will get them. And he'll post them and I, I love talking on topics that you have or questions that you have so uh that is always an option for our wednesday night bible class uh all right so that's enough on announcements i want to thank you all again for joining us i want to talk to you today because i believe that we have forgotten to read the sign i want to talk to you about it's time to read the signs we need to know where we are and where we're standing there's so much happening that scripturally prophecies are falling to the back and, and there's a lot of scriptures on prosperity, not enough on prophecy. There's a lot of scriptures on bettering yourself, but there's not enough on the salvation of Christ that changes us. So it's, it's time for us to start reading the time. We, we really need to know where we are and where we stand in. There's a lot going on in the world. Uh, the pandemic has took our focus off a lot of things, and, and we have forgotten to focus on Scripture. We got this event that's happening in Afghanistan, and there's a lot of torturous uh, prison that's going on over there that's not being talked about, but there's a lot of stuff that's going on. There's a, that, you know, a, a lot of stuff happening uh, with the United States pulling out and, and so forth. All of these things are prophesied. These are times that, that we know about in the scripture forewarn us about. I want to talk to you about going back to the time because uh, folks if we stay focused, hallelujah on the signs of the times if we stay focused on what the scripture said I think we, I, I know we can keep our life, our salvation together and we can change many the book of Corinthians said therefore knowing the terror of the Lord do we persuade many and when we forget about the promises of God, when we forget about the judgment of God, when we forget about how true God's word is, we don't live it like we should live it, and we don't tell it like we should tell it. So I'm hoping today to bring you back to that. I'm, I'm going to take you to some scriptures that we know. I'm going to put some scriptures together. I'm going to show you something. I want to bring you to the finality of what God is trying to do. When you recognize, hallelujah, that God has an ending to what he's doing, hallelujah, Y'all catch what I'm saying? saying? If God is putting an end into something, if God has a set time that he's ending things, then, and we don't know what that time is, we should be ready always. We should get ready and stay ready. That used to be the preaching of the old days, but we don't do that anymore. Everybody just living for themselves and doing their own thing. But I want to tell you folks, get ready and stay ready. So let's talk about uh, the signs of the time. It is time to read the signs. Let's go back to um, Matthew 24. One of the most prominent New Testament 
uh, scripture for prophecy because it's Christ speaking and saying things that all the prophets spoke about before and even the prophets afterward would speak about. They're talking about the things that Christ said. Now, this is, this is important to me. If when God was manifested in the flesh and he was walking on the earth and he started telling us things about the last days, that was seen to be the, me to be the most vital and most important thing that we can pay attention to because God spent time talking about it in his ministry. Somebody give God some praise. So we have to make sure that we're ready. We have to make sure that we focus and we have to make sure that we, we are geared towards the word of God. So, all right. So let me show you something here. So I want to go to Matthew 24. It's a long chapter. I'm not going to read all of the chapter, but I, I'm a, I, I might do some spot reading here, but I, I want to cover some things here. I'm going to say Matthew 24, 1 through 28 for those that are posting the scripture. Uh, uh, Matthew 24, verses 1 through 28, but you might find me spot reading here. But in the 24th chapter, we find ourselves, I'll get started because I've got to remember, I only got an hour to do this. So, uh, praise the Lord. So, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Take heed, no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and they shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of the sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whosoever read, let him, let him understand. Then let him which is in Judea flee into the mountains, and let them which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, there believe it not. For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they should receive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore I tell you, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber, believe ye not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For whatsoever the carcass is, there shall the eagles be gathered together. Now I want to show you something to you, because I... Uh, uh, we know these scriptures, we heard these, and sometimes we can hear something so much that we become deaf to it, or we become blind to it, and, and it's just like what happened in the Old Testament, I'll get to those scriptures later, or in the old days, rather, they become deaf and they become blind to things, it's the same thing with, uh, in the beginning when Noah was preaching that it was going to rain, and he started preaching this when he was 500 years old, and he preached it for 100 years, well, people, it falls on deaf ears. And, and people don't listen to it, and we, we keep warning about signs, keep warning about something happen, and then day after day nothing happens, we become spiritually as well as naturally blind, spiritually as well as naturally deaf, and this is what is happening to us right now. We are in 2021, we're in, we're in a whole new different century, we see in the 21st century, we see in all this modern technology, we see in all these things, and they, and we have been preaching about the return of Christ since before my days, before your parents' day, before your grandparents' day, they've been preaching about this since Christ was on the earth and now the preaching has fallen on deaf ears and people are not paying attention to what God says and they're not paying attention to what the ministers are saying and we're missing it and it's time to go back and read the sign because our salvation is nearer than what we believe and I want to point out something to you Christ was talking to them and I want you to notice where the people were when they were talking to Christ because we're in the same place 
they were magnified and they were impressed with the fact that this building, that they, they had done some new thing. They built this great building and it took them so many years to build the building. And they were impressed with that because they were impressed with natural. They thought that natural progress was bringing them spiritual progress. They thought that the fact that technology had bounced them forward where they can build these tall buildings. Because remember, back in Genesis, they tried building these buildings and God stopped them. Well, now we move forward 5,000 years later and they doing this again. Well, 4,000 years later, they doing this again. They building these big buildings. They building these tall things. And the thing that they were stopped at in Genesis, they are accomplishing. So they were impressed and they were saying to Christ because here's God manifested in the flesh and he was this great prophet in front of them. They said, you see this building? They were building this building for years and look at how great it is. And we are in the same situation and we don't know it because we're not reading the times. We are impressed with technology. Look what we got going on right now. We got, hallelujah, they couldn't even build the building in Genesis, the 10th chapter. God stopped them. And now we have these folks that are paying thousands upon thousands of dollars just to go to the edge of space. We are surpassing what we were doing years ago. And we're more impressed with that than what we are, the prophecies that are being fulfilled. And we are more impressed with the right now. We're more impressed with the natural state of man and what man is accomplishing than what we are than what God's prophecy said. And they were in the same situation back then and we are there now. Look at our technology. We are impressed with our technology, with our television, with, with, with our cars, with all the stuff that we're doing. All our technology has us impressed, and we are missing the signs of the time because we think our technology is going to save us. We think if we go to Mars, it's going to save us. If we go to the moon, it's going to save us. If we go to a different planet, it's going to save us. But let me show you something. There was a reason God wouldn't let them explore other planets at the status that they were in. Remember the days of Noah. They were marrying. They were giving him marriage, they were giving adultery, they were doing homosexuality, they were doing all of these things that were, that were iniquities in the sight of God. Why would God let them take that to another planet to destroy another planet? And folks, ask yourself a question. Why would you think God is going to let you escape to another planet and then you pollute another planet with the same sins of Adam that's on planet Earth? Somebody give God some praise. Huh? You're being blinded by the technology and the enemy is lying to you and he's making you think that he has an escape that can get you away from God. But even if you could go to another planet, God is there. The book of Amos said if they go high into the mountains, lo, I'm there. If they dig into the depth of the sea, I'm there. Where are you going to go that God is not there? And we missing the signs of the time and we very impressed with our own natural ability and we are impressed with our technology we are impressed with our medical field we impressed with our psychology we just impressed we hallelujah back in my days we had landline phones and hallelujah that was impressive too now we have these smartphones that can actually do we got computers in our hand so we are impressed with that and for some reason we are deceived into thinking that our technology means that we do not need salvation. I hope somebody hearing what this preacher is saying today. We missing the signs of the time. And so Christ was telling me, y'all impressed with this building. And Christ said something to him. So I'm going to say the same thing Christ said. He said, you see this building? He said, there's not one stone upon another that will not be torn down before the days come that I, that I bring forth my prophecy. So look at all the technology. Look at the rockets they send up in space. Look at the missiles they're flying all around the world. Look at the great buildings that they're building. When you go into the downtown now, it, it, it looks like we're, we're looking at some sci-fi movie now because of all the great buildings that they have. But this is what Christ said to the disciples, and I'm saying it to you. There's not one stone, one brick, one sheet of metal, not one beam that we are looking at and that we're observing that God is not going to cast down. They very ships and satellites in Revelation. He saw them as stars falling back to the earth. God said, I'm going to destroy all of those things. We impressed with the wrong thing. Remember what I talked about last week? The things that are temporal, uh, the things that are seen are temporal, and that's what God is seeing. So we impressed with these things, and we missing the signs of the time. We're missing the signs of the time. We're impressed with our technology. We're, in, we're impressed with the fact that we can find people anywhere. And we're missing the impressiveness of God, the signs of the time of what God said he's going to do. God is still bringing it in. I don't care if man come up with a medication that'll wipe cancer out. It won't stop God, hallelujah, from bringing forth his prophecy. Because what they needed to come up with was something that would get rid of sin. And no man could do that. God did that. He came up with the cure-all for sin. Why are we not impressed with that? Hallelujah. 
We're not impressed with that, but we are impressed with our technology. I mean, look at the very technology I'm using right now. I'm sitting over here in Arizona, and I'm reaching people from all over the planet with just sitting here in my home by this technology, this little screen that's in front of us that allows us. This is our technology. It allows us to see people without being where they are. Hallelujah. And Christ said, you impressed with that, but I'm telling you, I'm going to destroy all of those things that you are impressed with. Somebody give God some praise. So that's where they were. So the disciples heard what Christ was saying, and then their impression changed from the building. They said, wait a minute, tell us about these times. When is this happening? And people of God, we need to stay on cue. We need to know, we need to recognize, we need to know where we're standing because we got to preach to others because Daniel said the wise shall understand but none of the wicked is going to understand. So it's falling in our lap to keep in front of those that don't know Christ, to keep in front of those that walk away from Christ, to keep in front of those that are in the wickedness. It falls in our laps to keep reminding them of what God is doing. But if the church forget what God is doing, woe is us. And that's what Christ said to him. He said, he said, I'm going to show you something. He gave us these signs. He told us. And we're looking at them. We're watching right now nations against nations. We're watching what's happening in Afghanistan. And the United States is they, part of us want the United States involved. And we don't want the United States involved. And, and either way, this road is going to get other nations in. And we heard Christ say these things are going to happen. Nations against nations. Kingdoms against kingdoms. We saw it all the way from the children of Israel. And we're seeing it in modern day 2021. We still nations against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. In all of our technology, we have not come to the wisdom of the fact that all of us are born of one blood on the face of the earth, whether we black, white, Islam, Muslim, Christianity, Protestant, Catholic, the same event is happening to all of us. We live in and we die in. And all of our technology has not caused us to understand that. All of our wisdom, the book of Romans said, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. We are so wise in our technology. That we can't understand that sin is what's destroying us. And we can't understand, even though we hate one another and we killing one another, we don't even understand that the same event is happening to us. And I'm going to take you even further. I'm going to tell you what, what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes said the only difference between us and the beast of the earth is that our spirit goes to the Lord, but the beast returned to the dust. Of the oh, somebody give God some prayer. We really ain't much different than anything that's happening on, but we think that we're better than one another and we're missing the signs of the time. So that's what Christ was actually talking to him about. And because they were so impressed with the thing, he said, your sorrows are going to be increased because you're not paying attention. And look at the increase of sorrow. Look at all the shooting that is going on. Look at all the torturing that's going on. Look at the abuse of our children that's going on. Look at all the events that is happening. We got all of this technology, but we cannot stop violence. We can't stop murder. We can't stop thieving. We can't stop hatred. We can't stop idolatry. We got all of this technology. But Christ came up with a cure for sin, and nobody wants to have nothing to do with that. Nobody wants anything to do with that. We don't even care about that. All of these wise people, these billionaires, zillionaires up on earth that have all this money, they putting their money into traveling in space, and nobody is trying to publish enough Bibles so folks can read the Word of God and understand the Word of God. Nobody's trying to build enough churches so we can fulfill what, what Solomon wanted to do, that in the times of our trouble, we can have a place to go and run to God. And that's the reason the book said we profess ourselves to be wise, but we are fools. And we are very foolish if we think we're going to stop the work of God. Hallelujah. I, I keep forgetting about time. I'm getting locked on there. If you think you're going to stop the event that God has planned from happening, then you're very foolish. But he's talking about all of these things that are happening. And he starts talking about, and there's one thing that's very clear here. Iniquity is so bad that we don't love. And that's what he said in that 12th chapter. He said, because iniquity should abound, the love of many wax cold. We don't help people like we used to. We don't just give like we used to. We don't just pick people up and, and, and take in strangers anymore because iniquity has gotten so bad, you cannot trust the stranger. You can't even trust your own family member. You can't trust. We marrying husbands that are strange to us, wives that are strange to us, because our sins have got so bad, we don't know who to trust, and nobody's trusting in God. We don't forgot to trust in God, and so we find ourselves in predicaments that are increasing our sorrows, and sorrows are increased upon the earth. We got bombings going on everywhere. We got young children being blown up, innocent being blown up, because we hate one another's religion. We hate one another's nationality. We hate one another's skin color. These are the signs that God told us to watch, but we missed it. The only time we kept anything is when it's an earthquake happening or a tsunami happened, but those are not the only signs God gave. He gave signs amongst men, and what was happening to man and one of the biggest signs he gave was our hatred we are hateful people 
And we're not even catching what's going on. And we just like Noah. And now, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah. Let me read scriptures here because I'll get ahead of myself. Go to Daniel, the 11th chapter, if you will. Uh, let's see what I want. Yeah, uh, Daniel, the 11th chapter. I'm, I'm just going to read a couple of verses from there. I keep, I, I get excited, I get talking, I forgot I got scriptures. Because I like to bag myself up with scripture. I don't just want to be talking and then, because uh, people are easy to flatter with words. Uh, it, don't nobody get mad at me, but we easily flatter with words. And we can hear a good preaching, a good thing like that, and we don't even check to see if stuff are true. I want to make sure that what I'm saying to you is true. I love to speak, and I'm a very emotional speaker, and, and, but, but I don't want you to be flattered with words. I want you to know the truth, and that's what's destroying us right now. So in, in Daniel's 11th chapter, hallelujah, he speaks about something. I'm going to start at, at verse uh, 31, and I'm going to read real quickly. Uh, I'll probably read to the end. It's not, it's not a lot, but I want to show you something there. So Daniel, the 11th chapter, verse 31. Um, and we find these words here. And, and arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of the strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifices, and they shall place the abomination that make desolate. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by the flame, by captivity, by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help, but many shall plead to them with flattery. And some of them understanding shall fall, shall fall to try, try them, to purge them, and to make them white even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and he shall speak marvelous things against the gods of God, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that for that, for that, that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the god of his father, nor the desire of woman, nor regard any god, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a, a God whom his fathers knew not, and he shall be honored with gold and silver, and with precious stones and pleasant things. Then shall he do in the most strongholds with the strange God, whom he shall acknowledge, and increase the glory, and shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for, for gain. Now I want to show y'all something that's happening here, so y'all pay attention to this. So in Daniel 11 chapter, uh, what Christ was talking about in Matthew, he was talking about everything that was leading up to the tribulation, and what's going to happen during tribulation, and even what's going to happen after tribulation. Now, now Daniel was talking about the very tribulation itself, the abomination of desolation. And here's what we're missing. We are so focused on pandemic. We're so focused on sickness. We're so focused on living our life. We're so focused on getting back out there that we are not paying attention to the scriptures. We're not paying attention to time. And all of this was happening while we are, 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 are trying to distance ourselves, while we're trying to stay in, while we're trying to get back out. We're missing what is happening prophetically. We're so busy. I don't want to catch corona. These people got corona. We're burying folks. We have been made busy with our sorrows that we missing the prophecies that are being fulfilled and what's happening right now that the world is in such a predicament that it's actually showing that we need a one world leader because all of the leaders that we had that we have put our faith and our trust in they get into the office and they fail us from day one and y'all know y'all got to say amen to it and I'm talking about every one of them even the prince of Ethiopia that stood in it, we had great hope and great glory in him and it was deceiving to us because it did not fulfill what we needed to see and even to now, we couldn't wait to get Trump out of office. Now we got somebody else in and we still see the failure because we are so focused on the things that God said don't mean nothing that we missing the prophecy. God is setting up people in office that will fulfill the prophecy and we don't even know it. And that's reading Psalm says, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we remember the name of the Lord our God. And the people are trusting in kings and they trusting in leaders and they forgetting to trust in God. God already provided a salvation plan. There's no president that's going to bring salvation plan. There's no king that's going to bring salvation plan. There's no leader that's going to bring us out of the sin. They are just set up in place to fulfill the prophecy that God wants fulfilled. And everyone that stepped into that office in the United States or whatever country they step in, they fulfilling the word of God. But we so lost in the building. We so lost in, in the pandemic. We so lost in, in the money. We so lost in the pleasurable thing that we're not catching the fulfilling of the time. We're not catching. Now Daniel saw this he saw this king come up that's going to blaspheme the great name of God. And back in our days we thought this was a great thing. But if you actually stop and take a look. We got preachers right now oh hallelujah. In the pulpit that are creating great blasphemy against God. 
We got preachers that are preaching that they are God. There's a preacher that was on the other day. He was preaching that God, that Christ had to come to him and get salvation plan for him. He's preaching this to people and that he was the only way, only way that people are going to get saved and they need to buy them a place in heaven. And the folks, this man is rich because the people believed him. And he said there's going to be false prophets in the world. And we focus on the pandemic and we're missing the false prophets. We focus on the sickness, we missing the false prophet. We focus on getting back into a world and living our life, we missing the false prophet. And there are people out there that are for gang's sake and they preaching for gang's sake and they are trying to get you and you are not catching the word of God because you focus on the building. That's what Christ was trying to tell them. Y'all worried about this building, this building going to fall. All of this stuff is going to fall. Everything gonna fall. Everything that we're doing, we're gonna have to give an account for. And there are people that are being wasted. There are people that are losing their life. They're losing their salvation because they're trying to follow stuff that tickles their ear. They can't, that's what the book said. We, 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 we want milk, but we don't want meat. And the simple fact that we only want milk is causing us to lose our salvation. It's causing us to lose our stand because we can't handle the strong word of God. We can't handle the truth about the word of God. We'd rather hear that hallelujah God wants to make us rich. We'd rather hear that we can buy our way into heaven. Let me tell you something. You can't buy nothing in heaven. If anything in heaven were for sale, you couldn't buy it. The richest man, Jeff Bezos, couldn't buy it. Nobody could buy it. If God was to sell anything in heaven, you wouldn't be able to afford it because it's too pricey. It's priceless. Hallelujah. But God bought salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, and he gave us Jesus Christ. And we're missing that because we want preachers that are telling us good things. We want to be told we're going to be rich right now. We want to be told we're going to be, we're going to be blessed right now. We want to be told that right now we're rising up. That was the downfall of the Israelites, why they could not receive Christ. They thought Christ was coming to establish the kingdom right then and there. When Christ didn't establish the kingdom right then and there, they didn't believe that he was the Messiah. And that's the reason the Jews turned with the Romans to crucify Christ, because they were looking for the right now kingdom. And we're looking for the right now kingdom. But the scriptures have to be fulfilled. We got to understand something, saints. I want y'all to understand this. The scripture has to be fulfilled. The prophecy has to be fulfilled. False preachers have to come. False teaching has to come. And the Antichrist has to rise up. And if we're not preaching this to our people, we're deceiving them. We have to preach the truth to them. We got to let them know. The Antichrist is coming. The spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. And it's already deceiving people. And that's the reason we follow following all these different teachings. And that's what he talked about in Daniel. We serving gods that we knew not. Daniel prophesied that was going to happen to us. He prophesied that we were going to go after gods and statues. He prophesied we were going to go after different beliefs. And Christ said something in Matthew that we didn't even catch. And we read it real quickly, but we didn't catch it. He said there's going to be false Christ. Christ said it himself. They're going to even send you a false Christ. And I'll, I hope y'all don't get mad at me. I hope you stay on the line there. And we saw the false Christ and we worshiped the false Christ. And a lot of you got that false Christ in your home right now because you got the picture up on your wall with this handsome blue eyed, long hair, white skinned Jesus. And that's a false Christ. And I don't care if it make you mad because if you go back to the book of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, he said there was no beauty about him that we should admire him. He did not send a handsome Christ down here to the world because he didn't want women falling in love and he didn't want men jealous and I'm preaching you the truth but we don't like that because we like pretty things. Oh somebody hear what I'm saying and the simple fact that that's deceiving us is showing you how everything else is deceiving us. We're getting into the season now which is the greatest deception of all time because we think these holidays here, hallelujah, we love a holiday because we're supposed to bring the family together and we don't even realize that these holidays are making us worship false idols and Daniel just said it. You're going to worship gods that you knew not. Christ even said that false prophets are going to rise up. And this very month, and I preach, I've been preaching this and preaching this and preaching this, and I say it and I say it and say it, and sometimes they like to fall on deaf ears. And the very saints that I'm talking to will shout Jesus, will shout God, and will go home and put up and decorate a tree and sing in front of the tree. That's worshiping an idol. How plain can I be? Scriptures are being fulfilled. It's time to read the sign. We're not catching the sign. And we sharing gifts to one another. And I'm going to show you something in Revelation that really made me think. We sharing gifts and we giving gifts to one another. And if you go to Revelation and you read in Revelation when the two prophets, Moses and Elijah, had returned to the earth and they were preaching and they were killed and left in the streets, the people shared gifts one to another. We're doing the same thing that the prophecy talk about, but we don't catch the signs at a time because we skim the book, we don't believe the book, and we don't follow the book. And I'm trying to show you now we got to start reading the signs at a time. Hallelujah. Time is failing me. Hallelujah. I want, I want to say so much more. Daniel 12 chapter, 
Now, the very next chapter, uh, let me read it up real quick. It's a short chapter, and then I'm going to get to some other point here. Daniel, the 12th chapter. It said, And at the time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which shall stand for the children of the people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time that the time that the people shall be delivered, every one shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, o Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Let me read that again. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood up other two. The, uh, and one on, one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And the one said to the man clothed in linen, which is on the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these waters? And this is important. Catch this. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which is on the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and he swore by him to live forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half a time. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be fulfilled. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall the end of these things be? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from that time of the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make a desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred ninety days. That's three, that's uh three and a half years. That's what that equates to. Blessed is he that waiteth and come to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days, but go thy way to the end thee, for they shall rest and stand in lock at the end of the day. So he's talking about the dividing of the tribulation period. That's what he's talking about there. But let me go back. I had a point to this that I was reading to you. So Daniel was considered wise, and, 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 and quite often even the heavens called Daniel wise, and he was very wise. But when they start talking about the tribulation period in the ending of time, Daniel said, I didn't understand, because it was not for his time. And there were things that were being talked about in front of Daniel that wise Daniel could not comprehend because he couldn't place it into the 21st century because he was like five, he was like uh, 590 BC somewhere around there. He couldn't place this. He couldn't he couldn't understand what was happening because there was stuff that was happening way before his time. So the angel told him, Daniel, just write this down, seal it up. This is not for you to understand because it's not for your days. But you do need to understand this. All of the righteous should shine, should shine forever, but the wicked going to continue to do wicked. And the wicked are continually to do wicked. If y'all take a look at what's happening right here, we're getting more wicked day by day. We're increasing in our wickedness. We are making wicked right. And that's what's increasing wicked. Things that used to be wrong, we are increasing. And we, we make a law for it so we can do those things without exacting punishment. But you cannot make a law that will take away the judgment of God. You understand what I'm saying? So Daniel wrote it. He said, knowledge is going to be increased in the earth. Now, this is important. He said, knowledge is going to be increased in the earth. And this is what we're seeing right now. The very technology by which I'm coming to you was stuff that Daniel was seeing, but he didn't understand because he did not know how was it possible. He was actually seeing people, seeing people, but he couldn't explain what he was seeing because it wasn't in his days. They didn't have technology of telecommunication. They didn't have technologies of cell phones speaking to one another. Daniel was receiving things from God, but what we're doing right now, the technology we're using are God-like things, and we didn't even know they were God-like things. Hallelujah. We were taking things, hallelujah, what a mighty God that we serve. And we were getting things that were God-like because the enemy was sharing stuff with, the men, with, the, with men that fell. And men was trying to use God-like things to increase their wisdom and increase their righteousness. But they couldn't do the same thing that God was doing. Somebody give God some praise. That's the reason they got into cloning. They got into cloning because it was a God-like thing. They went back to Genesis and they read how God made Adam from the dust of the earth. And all it was was a lump of clay that God had carved out and made it look like we look today. Oh, somebody give God some praise. He did just like you do in your art class. You get this lump of clay. It ain't nothing. He formed it to what he wanted to be. What a mighty God we serve. He gave it arms. He gave it legs. He gave it ears, eyes, and mouth. And all it was was a lump of clay until God breathed his breath into it. Somebody give God some praise. So man said we can do the same thing. Daniel just said knowledge is going to be increased. Look what man are doing. God said in Ezekiel that he would give us a new heart. So man start learning how to transfer one heart from one body to another. We were doing God-like things and nobody was catching it and we didn't even catch the signs of time. 
We didn't catch what was happening. God was saying all these things were going to happen. And we're doing all the things that he said. Yeah, I'm going to put in you a new heart. You're going to have a heart. And, and, and so he took your old heart out and he put a new heart in you. So man said, oh, we can do the same thing. So when people start having heart diseases, we find donors, we find kidneys, we find livers, and we're doing God-like things. Because what did God do when it was time for him to have a help me? He put Adam to sleep and took a rib out of Adam and made a woman. And men are doing the same thing. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? This is the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Men are thinking that they are gods. Our doctors think that they are God. And many doctors have God-like complex. And they think that they are greater than most people. And this is exactly what's happening. It's not just happening in the world, but now it's creeping in the church. And this is what he was talking about in the 11th chapter of Daniel. He said, this king is going to rise up. And instead of doing his wickedness in the street, he's going to do it in the church. He's going to stand in the very church. See, these very churches that, that the hallelujah, that we call hollow, that we call holy, that we call great. These very churches, because we didn't recognize God as God when we were in churches. Do y'all not understand why God put us out the church? Do y'all not understand why this pandemic came? Because while we was in the church, we were doing what Romans said. We wasn't glorifying God as God. We was in the church bringing glory to ourselves. We was in the church bringing praise to ourselves. We was in the church faking Holy Ghost. We was in the church faking deliverance. We was in the church faking salvation. And God looked down and it was an abomination. So he put us out the church. But see, people don't want to hear that. Think I'm crazy if you want to. Go back and see if I ain't telling you the truth. So he bought a pandemic and he said, they, they not even going to be able to stand next to one another. I'm going to bring so much sickness on them, they're not going to be able to be with one another. And God put us out the church because while we was in the church, it was all about us. Preachers start getting God-like complex. We start learning scriptures and start knowing things and all of a sudden we thought we were better than everybody else. And we was in the church thinking that we were better preachers than other preachers. We was in the church thinking we were better members than other members. Thinking that we were closer to God than other clubs. And then he said false prophets are going to rise and people didn't catch it. And the false prophets didn't only rise in the church, they rose in the world. And, and the false prophet was so slick. And I'm going to tell you why we got to see Oh, time would fail me. We got to see because we slowly stopped reading the word of God. We slowly start debunking the word of God. All of a sudden, Jesus doesn't exist. All of a sudden, God doesn't exist. All of a sudden, Abraham doesn't exist. And Paul said, I laid the foundation and let other men be careful how he built upon it. But if you tear the foundation and you start building your own thing, you got no ground or no rules or, or nothing to apply to how you should build. And we destroyed the foundation and the scripture was fulfilled. Many false prophets. And there are so many false prophets in the world that are standing in the pulpit and we didn't catch it. Let me go somewhere else. We got a willing ignorance. I want to show y'all this. This is what God, God, I was talking to God. I said, how is this possible? God said, you got a willing ignorance. So go, go here, if you will. Second Peter, second chapter, verses 1 through 11. Second Peter, second chapter. This is the reason we're being so deceived. We got, let me read. Hallelujah. I get excited. Boy, hallelujah. Second Peter, second chapter, uh, verses 1 through 11. Y'all let me get there myself. I had all these bookmarks. I can just turn to them real quickly. Um, all right. Second Peter, second chapter, verses 1 through 11. Watch this here. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there should be false teachers among you, who privately should bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them up, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many should follow their pronouncious way, by reason of whom they should, the way of truth should be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned worries make merchandise of you, whose judgment now a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For God spared not the angels of sin, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them to change the darkness to preserve unto judgment. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, and preached the righteousness, bringing him in flood upon the world of ungodliness. And turning the cities of Solomon and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them and overthrowing them, making them examples of those that should live ungodly. And deliver just Lot, vexed with their filthy conversation of wickedness, for that righteous man dwelling in them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. For the Lord knoweth how to deliver the ungodly out of temptation and endure the just until the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh and lust and uncleanliness and despise government, presumptuous are they self-willed and are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. Whereas angels which are in great and power might bring not really an accusation against them before the Lord. Now, uh, so catch that there. Now, I want to take you to 1 Thessalonians, because I want to read these scriptures real quick. 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, 
And we're going to do both testimonies, first and second. But I want to go first testimony to fifth chapter. I'll come back and explain all of this because time is failing me. I want to read it first. So first Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, uh, verses, let's see what we want here. I'm going to read like verses 1 through 11 there too. But at the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. When they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that this day shall overtake you as a thief. You are the children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, to, but to obtain salvation by the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourself together and edify one another, even as you also do. Now, I want to go one more play. 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. Now, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letters, just for lust, that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who is opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, and set it in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not, when I was with you, I told you these things. And now you know that whatsoever, now you know that, know what withholded that he might reveal this time. For the mystery to iniquity that is already worked, only he who now let us will let until he is taken away. Then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his countenance. Even he who is coming is after the work of Satan, with all power, sighing, lying, and wonder, and with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God sent them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So two things. In Second Peter, he said, we are willingly ignorant. And then in Second Thessalonians, he said, I'm just going to cause y'all to believe a lie. Watch this here. People, this, this is the part that really catches me. We are missing the signs of the time willingly. We are being ignorant on purpose because we want our own glory and we want our own fame. And because we want to do what we want to do. This is the part that scared me. So... God, God said, I got nothing to do with you being ignorant. You're doing this willingly. You're doing the exact same thing that they did in Noah's day and that they did in Solomon's day. When Noah was telling the people that it was going to rain, they had known, you got to catch this here, they had come from Adam onto Noah. And Adam lived 930 years. Hallelujah. So Adam died when Noah was 60 years old. So Noah's generation knew about what God did from the beginning. So this was passed on. They had Adam there. They had, they had the real story. They could talk to Adam and find out what was going on. So even Noah's generation knew. He knew about his great, 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 great grandfather and what had happened, how they fell. But they were ignorant on purpose. Adam had told them what happened, how he lost his place in paradise because he deceived God, because, not deceived God, because he didn't keep God's word, he didn't follow. He was telling the generation that. Enoch came along. Enoch walked right. He was with God, and God just took him up because he was living so holy. They saw all these things, but they missed the sign because they were willingly ignorant because they wanted to live their own ways. They wanted to have as many wives as they wanted to. They wanted to, they wanted to molest children. They wanted to pass children to the fire. They wanted to do the things that they were doing, and the book said they were willingly ignorant. And it's the same thing happening right now today, folks, and I hate saying it like this, but this is the book. We missing the signs of the time. We don't understand the scripture. The scripture said that our gospel is hid. It's hid to them that are lost. You are willingly ignorant about who Christ is. You study just like everything else. Just like you got A's in school, you can get A's in the Bible. Hallelujah. You know what's truth, and you know the truth is out there. You know how to get the truth. The very technology itself has opened up the doors of truth. But we are willingly ignorant to the things that God said. And God says, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to send you a strong delusion that you should believe a lie. You know Christ is real. You knew the flood took place. You knew that Daniel was cast in the line then. You knew all of these things, but you hid these things, and we became ignorant because acknowledging God would bring guilt on us and shame on us and make us leave our sin. But what did the book say? Here's another sign to the time. We love darkness more than the light. We ignorant. 
We know these preachers are preaching lies to us. We know these false prophets are lying to us. We know the word. We study the word. Paul said, continue thou and the things which you have learned. But we become ignorant on purpose because there's things that we want to do. We have agenda. And we're doing the same thing. What's going to happen to us? The same thing that happened to Noah's generation. They were ignorant on purpose. They saw Noah building this ark. They knew God was talking to Noah. They heard the voices of God through thundering. They knew God was speaking. They knew this man Noah was doing something different. They knew about Enoch. They heard how Enoch walked the earth in 350 years. And then all of a sudden he was not. Because God took them. They knew these stories. They knew about Lamech. They knew about Cain and Abel. They knew these things because Adam was there to bear witness. And he testified all the way up to Noah's generation. But the people denied it on purpose. And we're doing the same thing. We know what this book said. We know what's written. We know where it comes from. We know God is real. He has proven himself time and time again. But we willingly ignorant. Because we don't want to change our way. We don't want to give us something that we want to do. We know the rapture is about to happen. We know that the Antichrist is coming. We know the mark of the beast is about to fall in the world. But we willingly ignorant because we hoping, hallelujah, that our desires and our pleasures will overthrow God. You cannot overthrow God. Now, I'm telling you what the book said. And I'm saying that the book said we are willingly ignorant. That's what's wrong with us. And because we become willingly ignorant, God said, I'm going to send you a strong delusion that you shall believe a lie. So now you got these preachers out there because you wouldn't believe when he was preaching that Christ died, that you might have a right to the tree of life. You wouldn't believe when he when he preached who the true Christ was. You wouldn't believe the resurrection. You wouldn't believe the death, the burial. So God said, I'm going to send you a lie and you're going to believe other things. So now you got these preachers that's taking your money, leaving you broke while they live rich, promising you salvation through your money, and your money going to perish the same day that you parent, you are willingly ignorant. Somebody give God some praise. We know this word. We willingly ignorant. You know that this. You know what sin is, and you know what a sin is, and you know Hallelujah. You know you wasn't born the way you talking about you was born. We know these things. Hallelujah. You chose sin. You had desire that came upon you. And the same thing that God gave to me, he gave to you. He gave all of us the opportunity of righteousness. And he set before all of us. Moses said, God set before us a blessing and a curse. It's been set before everybody that's born on this earth. Everybody from the time of Adam to now. There has been two things set in front of them. Righteousness and unrighteousness. We chose unrighteousness. And we did it willingly. Hallelujah. Go back. Look at the scripture. Look at the signs at the time. Eve willingly ate of the forbidden fruit. Satan wasn't back there turning her on. She did it willingly. And we're doing the same thing. And then when she brought it to Adam, Adam did the same thing. Eve didn't have an arrow at his head. Eve didn't have a weapon at his head. Eve didn't say, I'm going to leave you if you don't eat of this. He did it willingly. And we're doing the same thing today. We are willingly ignorant of the word of God. We know what happened. We saw, we know about the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. They got proof about the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's not a great mystery. I can tell you what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. A great God caused a great volcano to erupt, and all of that lava came and covered them in pillars of salt because they were living in sin. And that's what happened to Lot's wife, and they had testimony of it, and they saw it to that very day. They knew it. Hallelujah. But they became ignorant on purpose. Angels came down to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and preached to them men and told them to turn from their way. They saw the angels. They saw the beautiful daughters of Lot, but they willingly wanted to sleep with the men. We doing it willingly. Oh, you ought to be shaking in your boots. Hallelujah. Now, I, I got to finish up, but hallelujah, I want to show you. So, look here. So, God is showing us all these things and we're missing the signs at a time. We're missing all this stuff there. God kept telling them they're going to come with great blasphemy. And this is just a stage of blasphemy. This is getting us ready for the greatest blasphemy, which is the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. We're doing the blasphemy right now. We're doing stuff in the churches we got no business doing. we in the churches sinning and then praising God at the same time. The book of James said you should not have sweet water and bitter water coming out the same fountain. He prophesied those things were going to happen. And they're happening right now in the church. So God put us out to church. And churches keep trying to get back in. We keep opening it up. And, 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 and I don't want nobody mad at me. I'm just telling you the truth. We keep trying to get back in. And then we go back to the church. And then what happened? All of a sudden, it runs around again. And then we get sick. Because we're not listening to God. We're being ignorant on purpose. He set us down for reading. That the one thing he didn't want us to do is coming in his tabernacle and defiling the tabernacle. But that's what we're doing. And we're doing it so easily now that it's going to be very easy to do when the Antichrist step on the scene. We're doing it now. And see... The, the new system that's going to take place, Revelation said, he said, 
uh, if you got wisdom, understand it's a number of man. The government already know how easy it is to get you to receive the mark of the beast because he's playing with you right now. And because you don't know scriptures and because you don't study, you don't even know that you're being played with. He's playing with you right now. We believe everything that's being told. We don't search nothing out. So the government knows how to get you. And even though we know what the mark of the beast is, we know it's 603 score and 6, and we know the computer readout for it, even though we know it, there are going to be people that's going to receive it during the tribulation period because they are willingly ignorant. See, here's the thing. Christ was trying to get them off of being fascinated by the building and being fascinated by money because when you're fascinated by natural things, it's easy to deceive you. That's how the enemy's going to see them in the last day. Because he's going to tie up their money. He's going to tie up their living. He's going to tie up their electricity. That's what the book said in the 13th chapter. They cannot buy, sell, or get gain except they have the mark or the number of the mark or the name of the mark. He knows it. And we know these scriptures, but we're going to be ignorant to it because we care about eating more than we care about salvation. We'd rather eat a morsel of bread with just like Esau who sold his birthright for a morsel of bread. We'd rather eat that bread now than worry about our eternal life later and the government hallelujah the spiritual government know it they taken over Babylon know it now I gotta jump in here because time is short go to Revelation I want to show you something in Revelation real quick uh, Revelation the 18th chapter verses 4 through 10 <coughs> hallelujah there's a lot more I want to say on this but time will fail me Revelation the 18th chapter verses 4 through 10 we find these words <coughs> I'm going to skip through some verses here. I'm going to do 8 through 10, and I'm going to do 20 through 24, the 18th chapter. So, uh, I'm sorry, 4 through 10, and then 20 through 24. Revelation 18, chapter 4 through 10. So we find these words. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not of her plague. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to the works in the cup which she had filled to the double. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow for her. For she said in her heart, I said, A queen, I am no widow, and she shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall a prayer come in one day, death and mourning, famine, and shall be utterly burnt with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament her, and when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, At last, at last, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Now drop down to the 20th verse, verses 20 through 24. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city of Babylon be thrown down, and it shall be found no more at all. And the voice of the harpers and the musicians and the pipers and the trumpets shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman or whatsoever craft he shall be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of the millstones shall be heard no more at all in thee, and the light of the candles shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the merchants were men of earth, and for the sorcery and for by their sorcery shall all nations build a seed. And, her, and, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and all that were slain upon the earth. As we're not telling you what's happening in, Afga in Afghanistan ain't really about the war between the United States or the United States protected. It's about prophets and children of God that are over there preaching the truth. And, and they're destroying a lot of those, but they're hiding it with other things. That's what I'm telling y'all. We're missing the signs at a time because we're so focused on other things. Now, he's talking about something here. He's talking about something great. There are two great events that are happening in the world today. And that's the spirit of Babylon and the spirit of Jezebel. Now follow what I'm saying. Now Babylon, the great city, Babylon uh, was was a was an unrighteous city, and God overthrown it. Uh, and on the days that Nebuchadnezzar took over, Nebuchadnezzar repented. That same spirit that Nebuchadnezzar had before he repented, that same sin that they had, that's the spirit that's on the world today. And the spirit of Jezebel. Now let me explain something real quick about Jezebel. Jezebel was a spiritual whore. She was not a natural whore. She was faithful to her husband Ahab, but she made the people of God, and she made the people of Israel. She made the serve other gods and that same spirit is on us today because we whoring after other gods and we trying to serve Christ and we trying to serve God but we still trying to serve our other gods. Oh somebody give God some praise. Huh? We are trying. We got little statues of Buddha. We got little statues of Christ. We got all of these images. We got we got little trinkets that we hang over the door. We got little things that we give ominous to before we do our prayer. We light candles. We light crystals. I hope y'all hear what I'm saying now. All of these are 
idols that uh, that Babylon that was observing and that Jezebel brought the people onto. And God said, I heard about the sin and they reached up to heaven. And just like it did in Noah's day, the sins of the people reached up to heaven. Just like in the days of Lot, the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah reached up to heaven. And now we're doing the same thing today. And God is looking down and he's hearing the cries of the children. And this is the time to see them people that a lot of children are going to come up missing. Hallelujah. And it's going to be for sacrifices. And, it, and it's going to be a lot of those running away to do their own things. And y'all got to hear what I'm saying there. And it's going to be for, for, for molestation of the children. So keep an eye on your children. Because Babylon and Jezebel is definitely alive today. And this is what God said he's getting ready to put an end to. So in the 18th chapter, what was happening there, God said, I'm going to put an end to that great Babylon. I'm going to put an end to that great spirit of whoredom. He said, rejoice ye saints. So you children of God rejoice with me. Because God is getting ready to put an end to this. Because the children were deceived because of the whoredom of Babylon and of Jezebel. What defiled the church was is that the churches couldn't get away from the spirit of Jezebel. They couldn't get away from worshiping other idols. So we start bringing the idols in the church and didn't realize the sins that we were doing. We start idolizing the preacher, idolizing the choir director, idolizing the first lady. We start giving titles that were big and mighty because we were trying to bring praises onto men. The spirit of Jezebel is in the church. The abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Hallelujah. You don't have to agree with me. I'm just telling you the truth. But I'm telling you what's happening in our church. And that's the reason we got all this fighting going on in the church. And that's the reason one preacher thinks they're better than the other. Because it is the spirit of Jezebel in the church. It is the spirit of Babylon. And God said their sins are reaching up to heaven. And they defiled the church. And we start thinking God need our money to run the church. But God don't need your money to run the church. He can give you whatever you need to do the business that he needs you to do. And this becomes the spirit of whoredom. Because Jezebel loved riches and she loved God and she deceived the people. She even killed neighbors so she can get his vineyard because it had a great price upon it. And this is what is happening in the church. Hallelujah. And a lot of you think your tithes is going to save you. You think your offerings are going to save you. You think giving to all these different places where they say give this money there. You think buying their little trinkets are going to save you. You are worshiping idols and you deceive and it's happening willingly. And I'll tell you why it's happening to you. Because when God was speaking to you as God, you wouldn't glorify him as God. So he sent you a strong delusion to believe a lie. Now it's about to happen thing is that the rapture is about to happen and the church is about to go. The Gentile church is about to go. Oh, time is filling me, but I got to get this out. The Gentile church is about to go. Y'all catch what I'm saying? We missing the signs at the time. Everything is happening. Everything is pointing up and it's showing up. And I know we're in 2021. I understand that. And I understand that our calendars are so far off. But y'all got to see the times that are happening. Y'all got to see what, what's going on. We are so wicked in this world. And nicotine is abounding and love is waxing cold. And these are some main things that God wanted us to catch. Nations against nation, kingdom against kingdom, all of those things are falling into place. Pestilence and earthquakes and diaper places. Do you not understand what God is doing? And all through all of that, the abomination of desolation is already here. It's going to step in the courtyard of the very churches that we call holy, that we call deity, the very places that Solomon dedicated once to God. We're going to allow sin to operate from there. Witchcraft is going to offer from there. He talked about something in Revelation. He said, This is what destroyed the people. He said, They were overcome by the sorceries. And he talked about two types of sorcery. Remember what I told y'all last week? Words have double meanings. To Sorcery means witchcraft. It also means drug. Look at the biggest thing that's destroying us right now. And yes, I'm saying it on Facebook. And I don't. If it makes you mad, it makes you mad because we can't be set free if we don't hear the truth. The biggest thing that's destroying us right now is our sorceries of the drugs, witchcraft and drugs. The, the saints are into witchcraft. The saints are reading their horoscope. The saints are burning sages. The saints are going to spiritualism. The saints are going to find out. They, they got a spiritualist that tells them future things are going to happen. This is happening in the church. Abomination of desolation. And the saints, oh, I got to say this as plain as I can. The saints are doing more drugs in the church than what the world is doing. We expect it in the world, but the church the same to do it. And, 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 ooh, I'm saying this, and you ain't going to be my friend after this. And we're making the excuse that it's for medical purposes. We're making the excuse that it's to help us ease our pain. But I want to tell you the truth. Christ is your healer. Christ is your deliverer. And you overcome by your sorcery. And we don't even understand that we've made laws so we can make drugs legal. Drugs that are altering our thinking, altering our altercation. And God said they are overcome by their sorceries. Please go back and read the book so that you don't be deceived. 
Why do you need drugs if you got the Holy Ghost? Why do you need all these sorceries if you got the Holy Ghost? We are being deceived by false prophets. False prophets don't just put on robes in the church. We have false prophets in the medical field. We have false prophets in the schools, in the university. We have false prophets on the job. Please read the Word of God and understand what the Word of God is saying so that you cannot be deceived because the book said the righteous shall understand. But we're not understanding. We're losing it. We're not catching it. We're losing it. Please go back and listen to this and hear this again. I got to close up because my time is failing me. But I got to read something from Revelation 19 chapter. Uh, and I'm going to close with that. I, I got to read something from Revelation 19 chapter. I got to read something from Revelation 19 chapter. And it says these things. After these things, I heard a great voice of much people saying, Hallelujah, salvation, glory and honor and power unto the Lord God. For true and righteous are his judgment, for he has judged the great whore, which he corrupt the earth with a fornication, and has avenged the blood of the servants at her hand. And they said, Alleluia, and a smoke rose up forever, and the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And the voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard it was a voice of great multitude, a voice of many waters, and a voice of mighty thunder, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. Now, I want to show you something here. Uh, I, I've got two minutes. I'm going to use these two minutes. So I want to show you something here. God is going to put an end to sin. Revelation, the 19th chapter, is talking about when God is done with everything. There is going to be a great praise that is given unto God. Revelation, the fifth chapter, talks about a great host of angels, 10,000 times 10,000, 1,000, 1,000. Revelation, the seventh chapter, talks about an innumerable amount of people, talking about all the saints of God. After God put an end to sin, remember what I said, if God has an ending time to thing, then we short on our time. When God put an end to sin, there's going to be a great bunch of people that come together to give God praise. Y'all go back and listen to this lesson. Catch what I'm saying there. I might have to come and bring another part to this because there's still some more stuff I want to bring you. We've got to stay on our toes. We've got to be aware. Don't be overtaken by the day. There's no reason I write them to you the times and season. You know the signs of the time. Love each and every one of you. God bless you and keep you. I'm praying for you. Stay in the word. Stay saved. This is Ella Foster signing out. Amen.